Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Enlightened Conversations, where we invite our hosts and guests to share their views on the world, work, and their personal lives in an enlightened way. This season, we're also looking forward to engaging more with our audience, hearing your enlightened views, and answering questions and topics you would like us to weigh in on. Today's episode is hosted by Michelle Lightworker. Hi everyone, it's Michelle Lightworker here and welcome to another episode of Enlightened Conversations. I have the lovely Christina Richer with me today. We're going to be talking about all things medical astrology. Uh, Welcome, welcome Christina. Thank you Michelle for asking me to come on board and do this podcast. I'm really excited to see where this goes and um, I I know we're just going to go with the flow so let's go. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely and 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 for those of you who don't know, the wonderful Christina Richer, uh, she is a full-time in- international intuitive consulting astrologer, an acclaimed author, teacher, healer, and global speaker. And Christina has 35 years in mainstream medicine and is now specializing in medical astrology. She's got qualifications in medical astrology, Ayurveda, metaphysics, metaphysics herbalism, stress management, color therapy, and astrology, and has written two books on holistic health. One's called Learn to Heal self-heal and the, her bestseller is called your astrological health welcome welcome christina you see those ones yep yeah no um no thank you what a wonderful introduction and of course i've got, <laughs> I've got my qualifications in nursing as well <laughs> yeah I mean, it's all part of the mix it's really strange sort of working mm. in conventional medicine for all those years and then when i decided to leave nursing i was already doing holistic stuff but to do it full time was um was something else but I, I i what i have found was um my conventional nursing and my traditional training really supported my holistic therapies that i give to other yeah. people so it's actually a really nice blend yeah i love that i love that you bring that to the table i love that more and more i've been connecting with a few people in the industry who have had like maybe a physiotherapy background or a, a, another a nursing or a a doctor or whatever background yeah. and they've been able to bring that um all that knowledge and to be able to help um bring weave it into the more intuitive um and esoteric side of things which i love mm. and um i haven't actually had much um i guess i have a little bit of my own connection with um the astrological side in spirituality because of my sign of background and we did cover a bit on astrology and how that affects the formation of the body and how that other planets affect that and so we did do a little bit of that um but um I haven't sort of d- done a deep dive into it or anything like that but it would be lovely just to find out you know from you um a little bit about what that looks like um and and how you see that um so how did you kind of feel drawn to doing all the the natural therapies when you were nursing was it was it did it come from a frustration or like a no no it came as an awakening and I was a student nurse at the time but keep in mind I had 35 Mm -hmm. years in nursing so just this is way back okay so um when I was in my first year third year no I was in my first year I was a first year student nurse I was 23 years old I went into nursing a little bit older tried to get into nursing when I was younger, but they wouldn't take me. They said I hadn't had enough world experience, although they were taking other people. So I kind of figured, well, you know, it's probably because I was dyslexic and um, being Mm -hmm. dyslexic, it does form a lot of challenges for you in life, especially in a job like nursing. But I found a way to um, overcome that. I kind of taught myself how to do certain things because I recognized Mm -hmm that I had something that was a little bit different to other people. And in those days, especially when I was a kid, um, dyslexia wasn't even known. They just put you in the dumb class. Yeah. So um, I kind of, I'm one for recognising patterns, which I think which is why the astrology does so well for me because I Mm recognise patterns really well. So being a, um, I must have, I must have been begin starting to be a bit self aware. So I kind of learned these um, little tricks I taught myself to learn, and to um, do things in a way where I would always be double checking myself, which is not a bad thing if you're a nurse. But in my first year of nursing, getting back to the story, I came across two people at the same time. They were in hospital at the same time. There was a, a, a gentleman, and in my first book, Learn to Self Heal, I talk about this. 
And I feel that this was the seed that planted in my brain. Um, I've changed the name. So I'm going to call this gentleman, Bob. He was about 60 and he came in for an ingrow toenail to have it removed surgically because it had gone quite deep and it was infected. Mm. And he was telling me his story, how 30 years prior, he had been diagnosed with cancer mm. and was told by his physician at the time, he only had six months to live. He was a type A personality. He was a CEO, he was a control freak. Uh, he decided to leave his job completely change his life, um, move into another venue of work. He had a loving, supportive family. And I said that was 30 years after the fact, after he got diagnosed and was told he had six months. Okay. At the same time, and you can't write this stuff, but at the same time, there was a 47-year-old woman and her name, her name wasn't Helen, but in the book, I call her Helen. She'd come in. Oh, you did write about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to write. Clear funny. <laughs> anyway, she came in and um, she, um, you know, it's funny how they had, had been allocated to me as patients. Didn't pick them. It yeah. was just how it turned out. Anyway, yeah. I got to know her quite well in that time that I was there because I was only I was only sort of first year and didn't have all the, all the things I needed to know. So I was kind of feeling my way as you do. Mm. Um, she was unwell and her doctor had, um, was waiting. She was waiting on test results. Mm -hmm. The afternoon shift I went in and she said, oh, did you have you, you know, my prognosis? And I said, yes. And she had been diagnosed with lung cancer that afternoon. Right. And she were, she was already, I feel depressed, although I couldn't mm. see it at the time because, I was a novice. I wasn't aware of all the symptomology. Like I can be in a group of people now and I gauge people now very fast and very quickly because I've developed developed my skills and I have experience. But as a first year novice mm -hmm. nurse, you don't have that. And I just said, oh, no, you know, to be okay. You know, the doctor said your, your, your um, life expectancy is 18 months. You have, you know, you can see your family. You can travel the world in that time. I said, you know, trying to be lively and cheeky, you know, da da da, mm. trying to lift his spirits. And she said, yeah. um, she said no. She said, oh, can you hand me the? She wanted me to hand her her bag. In her bag, she had her jewelry and her scarf. And she said to me, "You've been so so kind to me. I want you to have these." Mm -hmm. And I said, "No, I can't do that. I'm sorry. It's against hospital policy." That I knew. <laughs> mm. Anyway, um, she said. She didn't say that she was going to die, but she said that she had nothing to live for. Right. And I said, what about your family and friends? In hindsight, I realized that the guy, Bob, had all his family coming in. And I never saw her with anybody visiting her. Didn't occur to yeah. me that it was strange, but something I reflected upon later. Uh, that was my 11 o'clock shift. I knocked off, I went in to see her. And I said, I shall see you in the morning, bright and early. You know, trying to be cheery. Yeah. yeah. Came back to work the following day. I did, did a split shift. Uh, in, in those days, they called it a late early. Finished at 11 mm -hmm. and back at 7. Got yeah. into work at 7, went and sat in and had handover. And the first thing they told me was that Helen passed away at 6.30 a.m. that morning. Right. Now, I really didn't think too much about it at the time. I was like, oh, my God, she died. I think she was probably one of the first persons that I had experienced that had passed on that I knew as a patient. You, as a nurse, you kind of get entwined with, with birth and death. It's all part of the process. Yeah. But um, later on, many, many years later, I, I started to think about that. I thought, why was one guy who was given a six-month longevity to live and survived 30 years later and there was another woman who had 18 months which doesn't mm -hmm. may not sound like a lot but it can be a lot of time to to get a mm -hmm. lot of things done and visit people and stuff died overnight mm -hmm. and the only thing I could think of was that it was a mental decision mm. okay now it, yep. it's, and I think that situation planted the seed in me Although I wasn't aware of it, and although I didn't really 
understand what was going on. But when I went to write my first book, Learn to Self Heal, it was like, mm. oh, they came back to me as examples. And then I really sat down and thought about it. What I think the problem was with um, with Helen was that, yes, she had cancer, but she was also suffering with depression that, as a novice nurse, I would not have picked up on, but the doctors should have picked up on. And if she mm -hmm. had been treated for depression, because as you know, it's a condition of the mind, and uh, and um, you know all it, and it's usually because there's a drop of serotonin or dopamine in the brain, which um, you know you can lift, you can elevate that through medication or through certain foods, etc. Which I talk about in both of my books. Actually, I use depression as an example. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I I couldn't help but feel that if they had treated her depression, that maybe she would have given herself a chance. Yeah. 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 You know? The mental health. Yeah. And the will, the decision. Um, mm. I work, I work with, uh, I work with the, the will um, in my, in my 12 principles that I work from that platform and willingness. If the will's not engaged, yeah. um, it's just such a powerful thing. Um, people, yeah, they do really need to make the decision to change or make the decision to do, make the decision to live um, mm. in order for really, I think, any, any, it's like an invitation, honestly. Yeah. It's like an invitation for support, help, um, direction, the whole lot. It's really like an open door, isn't it, willingness? It, just, it is. It and it's also a that. principle in Ayurveda. They say you Isn't never it? tell a patient. No, it's one of the main principles of Ayurveda. You mm -hmm. always, um, you never tell a patient how bad something is. I'm not too sure whether mm -hmm. I agree with that portion, but but the way that they that they believe it is, if you tell some, if you tell a patient a negative thing about their illness mm -hmm. when they are already in a negative state because they're mm -hmm. sick, it all it it just enhances it. So they always come from a a positive powerful platform so when we yes. so then they will take their treatment with a lot more with a lot more positivity and if they go into surgery they, then their mind is calm and their mind is positive that things are going to be mm. okay and that's very powerful it's mm. very powerful indeed yeah and so you had an awakening for that 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 and i, as I, I opened I, your eyes very yeah. early in the piece huh so that was very early in the place. And as I said, I don't really think I was aware at that time. I mean, I was only a baby. I was only 23. I mean, I'm in my 60s now. And it's like, you know, when I think back to who I am now, to what I am then, my knowledge level was... But anyway, yeah. then over the years, I worked on the wards. I ended up in intensive care and I worked in intensive care for 25 years. And then I started mm -hmm. to notice that certain patients were coming in with their rescue remedy or with their um, vitamin C, or with their crystals, or, you know, whatever, whatever. And it was quite funny, um, the reactions I would get from my patients, like, you know, I'll be helping them, you know, sort their bags out and stuff like that. And I'd see the rescue remedy. And they'll say, oh, I know I'm not allowed to have this here. And I'm going, yeah, you can have it here if you want. Really? Mm. So I said, don't worry, I won't tell the doctor. I mean, rescue remedy is, 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 I knew enough about rescue remedy to know that it's homeopathic and it's not really going to do much harm. But it gave the patients comfort that they had something else which was supportive. Yes. Yes. And I yes. used to get a lot of these patients and, and my mindset started to shift over the years. And it was like, well, people believe in so many other things and not just what the doctors say like you know um white coat syndrome the doctors are god and therefore patients don't have a a say in their own health or in their own body and that's the way mm. it used to be and unfortunately it is still like that in some areas of life um when it comes to hospital practices and stuff but patients are getting and people I should say, I should stop saying patients. I've left nursing a while ago now. Mm. But people are more informed. They want to know more. They want to go True. deeper with their own journey and with, and, and with their own mm. health. They are more, um, pro, more proactive in their health. And, you know, mm. that. And, and I kind of feel that kind of threatens doctors um, a little bit and kind of takes the power mm. away from doctors a little bit. But um, mm. I always say to people, if you're going to go and see your doctor, you make sure you ask the right questions. 
It's true. Don't let yourself get intimidated by the moment. And it's like not go, about go intimidation. In doctors, yeah, doctor, it can be. If, if, when a doctor if looks at sort of yeah trigger, when a you know. doctor looks at a person, they look at the symptoms and what the focus is. If we get back to Helen for a minute, the focus was mm-hmm. totally on her lung cancer. It mm-hmm. wasn't on her mental state. Mm. It wasn't on her emotional state. It wasn't on whether she had any support. It was none of that. Yeah. Mm. You know, we're going to go in there, mm. we can either fix it or we can't, and then after that, you're out there doing what you need to do, mm. you know. So when it comes yeah. to the recovery process, friends and family are vital, the right mm. friends and family. Because when you are recovering, you want people around you that are positive. Definitely, yeah. And so how did you get um, drawn into the medical astrology side of things? Um, okay, so um, how to, how, okay. <laughs> um, during my nursing, um, I got a bit bored on um, night shift one day and I started to teach myself level one astrology. In those days, we didn't have any personal computers. And so I did it all letter writing, okay. you know, yeah, sent it yeah. off to Melbourne. Doing got, all the charts. And I, don't know whether you, I don't know whether you ever heard of Stocks College, S-T-O-T-T-S. No. But in those days, um, that was where I was doing my astrology. Anyway, I enjoyed it and I did really well. And then he asked me to come down so he could teach me privately and at the time that wasn't um, doable for me and I just said no that's not happening so continued with my nursing then I um and of course had always been interested and then I went into we went to India Um, my girlfriend and I knocked on my door one day and she said I'm going to India and she had a um uh, Morgan was four at the time and I knew Morgan ever since he was a baby and she said oh do you want to come with me you know he's a handful I need another pair of eyes and hands mm-hmm. I said yep yep so I went to India well did I develop a love affair with India I think I went about 14 times and you know I haven't been for wow. 10 years because and partly because of COVID and family commitments mm-hmm. and all the rest of it but in that time frame and it's funny but it was also an astrological phase I was going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards during that time I met um, I met a person and I've written about it in here and there's a section on Ayurveda in here as well um oh, cool. he was a heroin addict and mm-hmm. he knew that I had been a nurse or I was a nurse at that time and he said to me look I'm going through my treatment with Ayurveda can you come with me for support you know I said yeah yeah okay well anyway in a week I saw this person come off the drugs and he kind of went from black to white you know like an Indian white if you can imagine that and so much toxins came out and all they did was give him herbs massage um, a lot of yogurt uh, and and the yogurt is to calm the nerves it's it wasn't yogurt it was curd but over here the equivalent would be yogurt and um, I couldn't believe it he came off it in a week and I didn't see any, there, there, there were no major drugs involved, just the herbs off the country. Mm-hmm. And when I got back, my head was been something in, in me switched on. So I went mm-hmm. and I did a course on Ayurveda the first year, did that, fantastic, going in to do my diploma. And then they cancelled it or they postponed it for a year. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, well, what the... And then at that time, I was beginning to be a little bit more conscious about myself and about my surroundings. And I said, okay, guys, okay, guys, I said, what am I meant to do? If this is stopped and I know you want me to do, what am I meant to be doing right now? So I came across this woman who was a teacher at the college I was working at, Nature Care College, where I was studying, not working, I'll stand corrected. And um. She, she was teaching level two astrology onwards privately. Mm-hmm. Put my hand up. I said, Parampara, can I come to your class? I said, I haven't done your level one, but I've got level one and I got over 90%. And are you okay if I come on board? She said, yeah, fine. Well, I did level two, three, and four in one year. I was hooked. I realized yeah. astrology is the science of pattern, patterns and behavior and how it affects you via your planets etc and I found Mm. I I just found that I was really good at it my brain just clicked in it's like 
planetary symbolism was something I could do really well. And I could mm. see things like, and I suppose being a Scorpio, it helps because I've got this power of wanting to get to the bottom of things. And it just mm-hmm. went really, really easily for me. And in the meantime, I went back and I finished my Ayurvedic studies and I went off and then I did herbalism and all the rest of it. And then I thought to myself, well, um, there's a medical astrology course on available at the Nature Care College. And I thought yeah. I should do that because... I've got all this background in health. Why not extend Mm -hmm. it to astrology? So, of course, I went in and I did that. And it was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this just makes so much perfect sense. Like, to me, it was just ding, 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 ding. Oh, oh." it's wonderful. And, of course, linking in the physical with the spiritual, with the psychological, Mm. with the emotional. and And then I felt that over the years what was happening to me is I was gathering my tools Color mm-hmm. therapy, chakra therapy, yes. Ayurveda, astrology, mm-hmm. psychological astrology. And I was gathering, and I also did a course in counseling, but I was gathering all my tools together for me to go and do what I do now full time, which is not something that I ever considered doing. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's I amazing, isn't it? Good, I was having such yeah. a good time. <laughs> <I> <laughs> <laughs> I love and, that. Uh, it is a joyful journey that you're Yeah, talking no, I was about. having it's such really a good time. That. I was learning about things and I go, oh my God, this is so amazing. Like it just makes sense. And I can see how it relates mm. to Ayurveda because astrology and Ayurveda are closely linked. And I could just see how mm. everything was connected. And it, for yeah. me, it was like, oh wow, you know. So yeah, then I went yeah. up and I did that. And of course, uh, I've been very, very lucky to study under some um m- major influential astrologers like Alan Oaken. Um, Maggie's up there in Queensland, um, Maggie Kerr, don't know whether you know her, mm-hmm. and of course, Kira Sutherland, um, Jane Patrick Riddick, um, oh, and Lynn Coiner, who is a wonderful woman, a medical astrologer mm-hmm. out of America. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, love her work, Fantastic. love her work, love her work, you know, and, uh, and, and it was just, you know, on and on and on. It was just it's it was just an amazing journey of absorbing knowledge and experience and learning. Yeah. And then it's um, funny, isn't it, how we fall into things like oh, know. you know along the way, and then and then they end up being like a catalyst to something else as well. But it's it's like if we just let ourselves go on the journey, it's um we don't know. Some, some of it, I'm not just enjoying it. I'm just interested. Like the same thing for me with Steiner Ed and yeah. Um, I didn't know about anything about Steiner. A friend of mine said, "Oh, I'm doing this course, and it's a and you know Steiner course." And I looked into it. Oh, wow, that sounds really interesting, like spiritual science. And wow, I was never good at science, and but yeah, this I can. <laughs> I can and of course, of, um, uh, makes sense to me. Uh, it's Richard Steiner, isn't it? Uh, and Rudolph. Rudolph got it close. <laughs> Rudolph, <laughs> he was into astrology as well. Yes, yes, a lot on mm. a lot on the cosmos, a lot on um, yeah, a lot on how 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 the planets have evolved and birth consciousness and things like that as well, um, which which I found interesting and the forming of the body and how um, each planet has um, it and each like astrological sign as well has its place in the body, like in all our bodies, um, you know, and, and how our bodies relate to each con- like each. Um, each um you know astrological sign um yep. so like for, for me being a Taurus it's the throat um Aries is the head um well done. Uh, Keep yeah going. yeah, yeah um, no, you're I'm, right. this Keep is going. my memory but um you know this is a long time ago I, I mean I studied this when I was like 23 and I'm 52 this is 53 this Aries year, is so. the head Taurus yep. is the throat Gemini, Gemini is the head. The- okay and the, and the fingers Le- Cancer, Leo it- the heart Cancer is the digestion. Let's go through the signs in order. Yes. Cancer is the mm-hmm. um, digestion and can be a bit of the mm-hmm. chest. Then you've got Leo is the heart and spine. So you were correct. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got um, Virgo is the pancreas, the, and the upper pancreas. digestion. And then mm-hmm. you've got Libra, which is the kidneys um, and the lower back. This is very, very mm-hmm. general. Then you've got Scorpio, yep. which is the um, the nose and the re- reproductive and the um, right and the rectum, like anything to do with elimination. 
And then you've got mm-hmm. Sagittarius, which is mainly to do with the liver and hips, although it's more than mm-hmm. that, but it's just cutting it very, very short. And then you've yeah. got Capricorn, which is basically to do with the bones and skin. And then after Capricorn, mm-hmm. you've got Aquarius, which is mainly to do with the circulation, but not only the physical circulation, but also the mm-hmm. electrical circulation, like like the um, mm-hmm. um, the management of our chakras and stuff. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. And yeah, then you've right. got Pisces, and Pisces is to do with the feet. Oh, and and yes, course, feet. Aquarius is also ankles. And then you've got Pisces, yes. and it's the feet and the immune system. Mm-hmm. So fantastic. Wow. So you got a really good memory. You, the ones that you <laughs> you got them right. Go, girl. I, I I remember Sagittarius, like the archer, and there was a reference to the thighs. Um, and so yeah, it was like it was almost like from a head to all the way to the Pisces to the feet. Yeah, and it went. Mm. So it's interesting you mentioned the organs. Um, I think we I think we mainly covered the parts of the body, and we were doing like um like a lot of stuff in what they called eurythmy which was actually movement and we were playing with the, the parts of the body that was relating to that sign um physically wow. in that physicality in that movement so that was that was really interesting as well just doing all of that um to embody it like to to assist ourselves if there was sort of like a deficit in that area or a weakness or a strength to kind of figure out where where is that for us as well which was really interesting mm. um yeah gee weird this is bringing it right back now to um gosh a long time ago yeah it was very no, no. good memory man. excellent you'd make a good medical astrologer mm. who knows, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. well I'm retired now but I I, I just do it I, I'm a bit like that whole I do things that I, I have a joy for it or a love for it and you just follow yeah. things and I'm a lifelong learner. So yeah, I'm yeah. Saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying curious, I've got you know. I've got um three planets in my third house of education and learning. It's like all I want to do is yeah. learn and learn and learn. And Jupiter is one yeah. of them. And it's like, oh my God, you know, I just I have to really kind of go, okay, now that's enough. <laughs> you know, I've got all <laughs> yeah. the and what am I gonna do with them? It's like yeah but anyway yeah it was Enjoying obviously yourself. part of me getting here but in my yeah. both both of my books but in this one in particular your so astrological just, just for, for those yeah yeah so for those of, for those of you listening on the podcast you can't see the actual um thing um it's called your astrological health is it that one that's the yeah. bestseller isn't it that's the that's that the one, one is the bestseller, the best number bestseller. One on yeah so what sign are you again michelle oh i'm a Taurus. That's right. You're a Taurus. So I'm going to go through just the Taurus. Now, when you buy one of these books, you can actually get it from White Light Publishing in Australia. Oh, I love White Light Publishing. They're awesome. White Light Publishing. She's my, um, Julia is gorgeous. She's my um, publisher Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. uh, she's in Perth, based in Perth. So she just posts Mm -hmm. it out to you. It's a lot easier than trying to get it off me. Or or you can get it it on uh, my books on Amazon um dot com yeah us obviously and australia if you want to go down yeah. that road and they are available on ebooks but i'm just going to go through the tourists now when you look at your um birth if you have a birth chart and you know mm-hmm. your sun moon and ascendant this mm-hmm. is what you look at because your okay. sun governs your vital force mm-hmm. and of course it's the cut it's the day that you're born so it yes. covers the vital force and basically your physical body. Your moon, well, you sent it to me. Um, you did. sent it to me. We have got here. Okay. Moon and Libra. Okay. Let me have mm-hmm. a look at your chart. First of all, you've got the sun in naught, naught degrees of Taurus. So in the book, you would mm-hmm. read about Taurus in here. So in each mm-hmm. section, you've got um, a bit of a profile about who you are. There's a case study mm-hmm. about a condition related to a Taurian thing. You look at the body organs, how to become stress, how to overcome stress, um, how, how you are unbalanced, like when you know that you're unbalanced. Then under recommended therapies, and these are all therapies. You don't have to do them all. I just say um, do the ones that you are attracted to. I've got... Uh, yep. Aromatherapy, Ayurveda, bark flowers, the chakra, the herbs, the crystals, colors, minerals, nutrition, 
tissue salts, vitamins, recommendations, best day and mantra for each sign. Beautiful. So in the book you look at, so in, in this book you would look at for you, you would look at Taurus because that's your physical yeah. constitution. Then, mm -hmm. and of course, in your case, you've got a Taurus ascending as well. So that makes mm -hmm. it a double Taurus. Most people will have a different ascendant, but you look at the ascending. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's that one. And the moon is in Libra. So you would also look at the sign Libra for you. Now, it's interesting. They're both ruled by Venus. And your mm. Venus is right on your ascended in the first house. So the Venus in this chart is very important. Is a it, for mm -hmm. me, it's a it's like okay, you got your sun and moon both ruled by Venus. Venus is uh, like even without looking at your chart, I knew. And then when I had a look, Venus right on the ascendant. So mm. medical astrology wise, that just means that um, Venus issues. So that could be issues around um, sugar, which is related to diabetes. It could be issues around um, uh, the renals, um, lower back, also to do with um, a little bit with adrenals, because in your case, it's um, in the first house. First house is um, uh, usually ruled by um, Aries, which is the Mars house. So I would be looking yeah. at things like adrenals, like chronic fatigue, um, yeah. um, those kinds of things. And you've got Mars and Gemini. So I would also be looking at things like the nervous system. So when the uh, when the adrenals are out, it really does affect your nervous system as well. And in your and in your chart, it's really really clear. Mm. Um, yeah. So when so yeah, you know, that's just a real quick thing. You've got Jupiter in the sixth. House. And can I can I just can I just give you some feedback on those two things? Oh yeah, sure. Um, with with the sugar, yeah. Um, I've had ever since forever I don't even know how long but I've always had low blood sugar so after a meal I have to make sure I don't have too much sugar because otherwise this goes up and it goes crash so I've yeah. had to really like be very like a master at how do I make do my meal like low GI stuff and then definitely have that and then um with my um uh adrenals I've I've been very like in my counseling practice that I had many moons ago one of even though I was specialising in addiction, I was very well aware of workaholism because, you know, it's like you, like, you know how you said, oh, you've got to watch yourself, like, how much you do um, when you're in the joy of something. And so yeah. for me, yeah, working is a joy. So I've I've had to become, even in retirement now, I've, I've still had to become very, very good at pacing myself and not yeah. doing too much to, you know, so that's really good feedback. But the other thing I wanted to tell you on that um, that you mentioned to me was uh, my moon being in Libra. Um, my mother um, was a Libra when, and my father as well. <laughs> so I had two parents who were Librans. Um, so in terms of that, like mothering energy and that paternal or that maternal, you know, yeah. I've had that. And so, and, and I don't know. Um, I think this is very real for me. I, I feel like in my parenting, even of myself, um, now that it's more functional, because <laughs> I, I, you know, we've all had that sort of nasty mm. talk um, to ourselves. But um, in my parenting of my two daughters, I've always, um, I know the world's not fair and everything, but I've, I, I have focused on justice. I have focused on fairness. I have focused on that sort of liberal quality of yep. making sure liberal. that we. Yep. Yeah, very diplomatic and very, um, number one, we respect each other. Number one, we all respect each other. It doesn't matter how we're feeling, that's great, but we, whatever we're doing, we respect. So that's been really big in my parenting. Just wanted to give you that, those two bits. Yep. Of, oh, no, bits that's of great. And, of course, I haven't read for you. I did send you a chart as a, just so you kind of get an idea of what charts were like, but I've never read for you, but just yeah. looking at that really quickly, yeah. like if I was picking out, yeah. you know, the medical things, like just bang, 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 bang. Mm. So yeah. Mm. And um, the moon uh, is, is related to the bodily fluids or, and the soul connection in the chart. It also relates to mother. Mm. The fact yeah. that you have a mother who is a sign of Libra. It's not in every case, mm. but um you will always see a signature of around what the mother energy is like because your chart carries um, your mother and your father's influence, just like the um, DNA of both parents make you. The charts of yeah. both parents make kind of make your chart as long as well Ooh. as well as your own 
decisions around when you wanted to be born and what you wanted in your chart because you chose that at a soul level before you were born. And as you're saying that, I'm getting a bit of heart pain. Now, I never get heart pain, and it's not like a die straight heart pain, but I'm just feeling, wow, there's a real acknowledgement, I think. Yeah, like connection. Of yeah. what you're saying, yeah, in my body, yeah. like I physically feel something twig um, with yeah. what you're saying. And now I'm feeling a little bit teary, so that's really interesting too. So <laughs> I think it's, it's a, it is a little bit about... Um, yeah, my mum passed away in 2021. So there, there might be a little bit of an acknowledgement from mum at the moment coming through um, with all of that. Um, so I just wanted to let you know what's going on in my body <laughs> right now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of, um, yes, yeah, so I, I absolutely love what I do. I was a bit, um, bit concerned about leaving a job where I got regular money to pay the mortgage and raise the family yeah. etc mm-hmm. but you know leaving nursing was the best thing I ever did yeah it feels and like I, it like for your it soul was, journey like yeah to it's like I, to be it's happy like and I'm at a different level now and what mm-hmm. I really liked about the fact when me leaving nursing is that the nursing has given me all this information and knowledge and it's given me a really strong background in the field of, yeah. um, you know, medicine and pharmacology because I dealt a lot, obviously, with giving out drugs and stuff to your patients. I sound yeah. like a drug lord, don't I? Yeah. It <laughs> no, is part of the course, though. Really you is. need a lot of drugs. Mm. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Mm. Absolutely. It, it's given me that credibility for me to go in and do what I do. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, because absolutely. I've got You've that got that other... other- background plus all the Ayurveda because I studied Ayurveda off and mm. off 10 years and I studied under doctors in India so you know I, I've got all this knowledge and oh, the best thing I ever did was to leave nursing and yeah yeah I'm so I'm so happy for you You're like my little my soul's like kicking up with tears with joy for you and um I love that I love that um and I'm, I'm curious too because I'm so passionate about um like mental health and when I saw you um posting in your group the mental health gut health connection I thought that was that was really key to um for people to really understand that there are mm. sometimes some very physical reasons why um that affects our mental health from our gut and people people I think don't understand the significance of that and and I, I just thought it'd be nice to talk about that for a little bit too to see okay what, so let's know, look, what, look a little bit about there. mental health For the past six months, Mars, the planet of inflammation, spontaneity, and action, and impulsiveness, restlessness, was traveling through the sign of Gemini. And so this included its retrograde period. Mars has just gone direct. So Gemini rules basically the nervous system. There's a bit more to it than that, but in a nutshell. So the nervous system runs from the tipsy off your toes to the topsies of your headsy. So it goes all yeah. the way. Everywhere. So yeah. anything that affects your nervous system is going to affect your brain. Mm-hmm. That's simple, right? With Mars being in retrograde um, and Mars just traveling through Gemini as it is, and it doesn't move out until March, then what you will be getting things like is that impatient people on the roads, people... Because, you know, um, Gemini rules the spoken word. It's all about the communication. A lot of angry fights, a lot of people talking without thinking, a lot of people getting stressed Mm. over things that they can't manage. And this affects the nervous system directly. So when a planet is activating as a sign and that sign is relevant to your chart because you have planets Mm. in that sign, then that part of your body is going to be affected for that time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If and in and, and in some cases that activation can be a trigger for you to look at something deeper because yeah. it's a trigger and Mars might have moved off in six in six months' time. But then you might be yeah. getting another planet coming along that might stay there for seven years, like Uranus, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm. And if that is the case, then that is the planet that is going to cause a lot of damage. But the Mars has come along and said, Right, I'm going to trigger this for you to do something about it now. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that we can use these planets 
planets as activators and yes. that we can say, you know, instead of being a victim to it, um, which I know a lot of people do get into, oh, it's Mercury and retrograde, oh, woe is me, oh, everything's not working in my life and all that kind of stuff. Um, but these 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 retrogrades and these these um, triggers when when you've got something in your sign, they're, they're opportunities, aren't they? They're growth they opportunities, are opportunities. Right? They are mm. opportunities to do things different or in some cases not to do something and to wait until the energy is more supportive. Now, yep. um, we currently have Uranus in the sign of Taurus and it's been it's about halfway through. Yeah, it's about halfway through. Uranus spends about seven, seven years in a sign. So it's been going mm -hmm. through Taurus. It's been going all over your Taurus planets. Oh, let me have a look at your ascendant just again. I just let me have a look. Let me have a look. <laughs> um, just let me have a look. See, okay, where are we? Oh, no, oh, it's coming up for you. Your, uh, the um, Uranus is going to cross your Mercury and cross, cross your ascendant. Where are we now? It's just gone direct and it's 15 degrees. So we are looking at maybe in a few months' time. I haven't got my diary here. I never go anywhere without my mm -hmm. astrology diary. But when Uranus crosses your ascendant, um, that's going to affect mm -hmm. your adrenals and your nerve and uh, your adrenals are going to be, you know, activated and a bit more yeah, over challenged. time. And you may get a bit stressed okay. with it. But you know this, and the fact that you know okay. this, you can prepare for it. And this prepare. is prepare. But not only prepare, you can do things now as being mm. proactive to support your Definitely. adrenals. To, you know, like if, if you were my client, I would say, oh, you've got this coming up. So you need to be supporting your adrenals now. You need to be you need to be bringing in a philosophy of life where if you get stressed, you do not participate in that stress response. Yes. Love that. And just having those strong yeah. boundaries around yeah. it. Having I, and I, also love the, I, lo I love the fact that I'm actually going to Bali in a, in a, in a couple of weeks for a couple of weeks as well. So okay. I can actually so use that out. time. Yep. To, yeah, fill out and, and and make sure that I'm nice and doing things slowly is 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 something I've had to teach myself because I tend to do things really quickly. And, and sometimes I think, when I in, intentionally do things slowly, um, it actually trains my adrenals to behave themselves. <laughs> well, it's interesting why I can see why you do things quickly. You've got Mercury on the ascendant. Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So if you think about the Gemini yeah. influence, it's sort of fast, spontaneous, well, and, and bam, massive. Bam. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Yeah, you know, yeah. That kind Love of influence. Yeah. And you've also got mm. Venus, your chart ruler, in this and uh, up um with Mars there in the sign of Gemini. So that's kind of really you know, like I can see why you've had um um exhaustion type issues in the past. But what I was going to say was, was by 2024, or was it 20, late 20, 2024, it's sometime in 2024, Uranus mm -hmm. is going to move into the sign of Gemini. Now, this is me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all you Geminis out there, or anyone who's got planets strong in Gemini, listen up. Uranus is going to move into Gemini, and it is going to travel through Gemini for, the last, for seven years. Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine what you've been experiencing for the last six months and take that in context and put that into a seven-year cycle. Yep. And you put that seven-year cycle onto the global platform. Mm -hmm. Mental illness is going to be on the rise. Yep, yep, that and makes even, sense. Anything yep. from anxiety to depression to insomnia, it's mm. going to be on the rise. Because it's, it's like the, last time, the way you um, we talk about it in um, Steiner education, the way we talk about it is, is when, you know, the nervous systems, like when you, like when you've got all these feelings that, that, that you're, that are contained and people, they're going along their lives, containing their feelings, containing their feelings and, and oh no, I'm just busy, just too busy to do, 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 do. But then when this happens, what you're talking about, what happens yeah. is, is, is our etheric body, that the chi, that the container of, of all that feeling, it's thin, it gets thin, 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 thin. And then it affects the nerves. And that's why people uh -huh. have nervous breakdowns, why their feelings float up to their mind and they can't control them because the lack of containment around their feelings. So what you're saying here is, is, is really key for anybody listening. Um, if this is happening next year, then now's the time to really like prepare yourselves, like learn how to ground, like, like feel, 
download the healing, meditate, ground. Yeah. Um, relearn, learn how, learn to how to do stress, stay mm-hmm. detached, you know? Yeah. Yep, think all those good things. Speak, like all these kinds of things and you might go oh yeah, yeah. we're learning astrology and then when it happens you find yourself at the doctor and they put you on antidepressants or anti-anxiety mm. tablets and you know you can become your body can become addicted to those chemicals mm. it's not that and you that, are a drug like, addict like, but it's if like being on the pill addicted, right it's like it stops creating the hormone itself it stops, because exactly. oh, we've already got it there so I don't need to do yeah. it and, yeah. and the body so, doesn't yeah. Yeah. do its own thing that is correct mm-hmm. so and uh so you know and, and keep in mind the nervous system runs anywhere in the body so wherever you've got a weakness in the body that your un- uh, nervous system can be weakened and it, mm. you, it can give you a problem whether it be in your hands yes. or shoulders or whatever and yes. the other thing I was yes. going to say was um the last time Uranus went into um, Gemini, 84 years ago, 80, yeah, about 84 years ago, because it's an 84-year cycle. Yeah, 712s um, are 84. Gotcha. Okay. Um, exactly. So you see, you'd make a great astrologer. <laughs> <laughs> You've just got the brain for it. Anyway, um, going back to that, um, the last time Uranus was in Gemini was when, whenever that was. Um, that was when autism was found, founded. Wow, how interesting is that? Yeah. And of course, yeah. Um, it it's was all about communication. Um, it's all about can't get in here. I'm locked inside. I can't communicate. OCD. Like, it's you know, yeah, yeah, it, you know, yeah. It's, it's, so you know, mm-hmm. autism was given this, and of course, over the years, it's been um expanded to the autistic um but, spectrum. Yeah, spectrum. But yes, yes. It, it it, it it includes things like um, dyslexia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very mild form of autism. It includes yeah. obviously autism, any auditory kind of um, condition which is connected where they don't. I think it's called auditory sensory perception or something like that. But there are many levels to yeah. and Asperger's. There are many levels to this condition, and so that was all that. Uh, um, the person who was doing the research on this um, I can't remember his name but um, I actually did read about it but I just can't remember his name his um, yeah yeah that was when that's the first started to come out and then of course down the track you started to get all these autistic kids we had a um, Neptune Uranus mutual reception uh, when was that Hmm. 20 20 30 years ago or something like that and, of course, that was when autis- autism kind of really hit the front page. And now in the U.S., not too sure about the numbers on this side of the world, but in the U.S., mm. when I did my last research, because I actually um, did a talk on this at an um, astrological mm. conference a few years back, one in mm. four people are, are autistic and they are mainly males, although females can be, but mainly males. And it's one in four. And I would say that now it will, the numbers would be even more narrower. Because now babies they're probably born, diagnosing them as well. So babies you know. born with this Uranus going into Gemini, you can, you know, the, the planet of chaos, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know yep. just think of your nervous system. Your nervous system is, needs to be like this. They connect, the synapses yeah. connect, they send each other messengers. But in autism, you've got this going on and you've got the messages and they kind of go like this. They don't connect. Yeah. don't connect. Yep. Yeah? So yep. Yep. Um, you've got all that going wow, on. That's so fascinating. What, do you, what do you feel? Hmm. What do you feel it, like in terms of um, significance for this, this Uranus coming in in relation to that? Do you, do you feel that 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 more um, autistic people will struggle or do you feel something else around that? What's your feeling? I don't see any kind of condition or planetary transit or um, I don't see any of that as a struggle at all. Reason Mm. being, it is what you are prepared to do. I say and this is my personal opinion, my philosophy is good daily practices will give you good health, okay? Mm-hmm. A disease take can take up to 20 years, uh, no, 10 years, sorry, 
although some mm. conditions can go back to past lives and even in childhood, but most mm. conditions take about 10 years to actually manifest in the body and cause problems. So mm. if you are aware, and astrology can come in and give you this tool, if you are aware of your body weaknesses and you are doing daily practices to keep those weaknesses in your body strong, that when you do have a difficult transit that could possibly spark off um, a load of symptoms or um, a, a condition, your body has been strong enough that you may get a symptom and, you know, but you will travel. It's not that it won't affect you, but it won't affect you as much. Yes. Yeah. And I think prevention is like cure really a lot of the time. And, um, and it is about, in order to do that, um, we need to value ourselves and take our health mm. seriously and take our mental health seriously and understand there is a connection between the two and to put more time into that and as a valuable thing for ourselves, not just all the other things we like to do in life, but the the, the taking good health, care of our health side of things as well. Um, and um, I'm, I'm just excited to, um, like, you know, learn learn even more. I'll continue to follow your group and, and um, let, let everybody know where they can find you too, Christina. I will. So that, I'll, so I'll that, just get to that in a minute. But one of the last things I'd like to say, what I would like to sure. see, what I would like to see, um, they didn't do it with COVID, which I was a little bit disappointed mm -hmm. about, although not surprised. I would like to, you know, they spend thousands of dollars on advertising, on um, doing this and doing this in relation to various things. But what I would like to see is advertisements. And you guys out there with the big bucks, you know, get on board and do this, you know, um, on how people can stay healthy and what they can do. Do you know, like mm. to stay healthy on a daily basis. I mean, this is the kind of stuff mm. I talk about in the book. This is the kind of stuff yeah. I teach my, my clients and my students. And this is the stuff I practice myself. To date, I've never, I have not had COVID. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's, 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 it's wonderful to um, change the direction of um, our, our, advertising to promote more promote of health or yep. can do like you know what so we're empowered realize, rather than yeah that, that's I realize it will bring up a whole big political pharmaceutical um issue <laughs> but mm -hmm. in but for people who especially people who um um who are sick but need that education and they know they've got to go here and they've got to go here and it costs money and when you're sick you don't end up yeah. working it is a very vicious cycle but for but I am going to tell you what I would say to somebody who is coming with this mercury on the on the ascendant or this uranus going into gemini or whatever to do with your nervous mm -hmm. system so number one your nervous system is to do with the air is is to do with air so you need to be having practices where you stay grounded you can Google that, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Um, having things like oil massages will keep you in your body. It's almost like when you're going to go through this condition, it's almost like your physical body is separate from your energetic body, yeah? So oil massages kind of is like a cohesive, yeah? So oil massages, stone massages, grounding, protection, say no and mean it. Not, not, Do not give your time if you cannot give it. Um, really be authentic in yourself. Increase your fish oils because the fish oils is the thing that um, soothes the myelin sheath, which mm -hmm. is the um, which covers the nervous system. So if your myelin sheath is strong, then your nervous system can work properly. With an mm -hmm. overactive nervous system, you also um, you also spent you um, spent up your um, vitamin Bs in particular. So you need to increase your vitamin Bs. And also your magnesium. Yeah. It's all in yep. here under cool. Gemini. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And where can people find you? Okay. So they can find me. I'm on Facebook. Um, Christina's Triple A. And the A stands for astrology, Ayurveda, and authorship because those are the three things I do. So it's the three things that I share my knowledge on and I rotate that every month. Um, you can also get me through my um, website, Christina Richterauthor.com. And just and for everybody listening, it's R, R I C H T E R. That's, yeah, that's Christina Richter. And Christina just with like a C. Name. 
just like my yeah, name. Christina the with the C, yeah. yeah. And also mm-hmm. you can follow me. I've got an astrology Facebook page, uh, astroplus.co.nz, and that is my link to Instagram as well as my normal Facebook page. So basically I've got a private okay. group for those who want to know a little bit more. And then on my mm-hmm. Instagram page um, and my uh, Facebook page, I post every day, just one post. I'm not one of these people who post five, six posts a day because I've got nothing better to do. I've got a very busy life mm-hmm. and a very busy practice. So I post once a day, what's going on with the astrological cosmos kind of thing. Um, if you're connected in my, into my website, um, if you scroll down, you can um, put your name in for a free seasonal newsletter that goes out every season. Um, you know, awesome. spring, autumn, da da da. So you get that. And um, and if you want to get hold of my books, White Light Publishing, yep. Universal yep. White Light Publishing. Um, if you're in Australia, overseas, yep. um, you can get them on Amazon. Um, this is the book that's got a bit of spiritual health in it as well as Ayurveda and a lot of um that's different modalities. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Fantastic. That's all there. Awesome. Thank and, you so um, much for joining me today. And if I can just mention, I've just got a talk coming up soon. Yes. Yep. Um, This Sunday, I've got a talk Mm -hmm. where I am talking about um, what's happening for 2023. It's a couple of hours. It's going to be on Facebook. And you can um, get, you can have a look at that through my Instagram page and through my private group. And I'm also doing a beginner's course, but it's not really an astrology course. And that starts the 2nd of February. It's called You and Your Planets. One of the things I've noticed is that I've had a lot of people who want to know about astrology, but they don't want to be astrologers, but they want to know yeah, what and Mars just, and their chart that. means. Yeah, so I'm perfect. doing this course. Um, I, I only do it once a year. It's an online mm-hmm. course and we meet up in the group and I guide you through and I'm very hands-on with everybody involved. And um, it's um, so that's in February. So that's You and Your Planets. So at the end of the course, you you get all the powerpoints and everything provided you also you you get to understand what the planets mean in your chart and how they influence you individually not awesome. just as a generic thing and for those who are oh yes in um end of may i will be teaching a medical astrology course um mm-hmm. with the astrology collective um, they that's run by Zane and Lynette out of um, Perth. So the Astrology mm-hmm. Collective, you can Google that on Facebook and I will be teaching medical astrology one-on-one uh, to that course. And there's a level two at some point after that. And if you're in New Zealand and if you happen to be passing by um, is it Paraparam? Paraparam, and I think it's the 4th of March, I am doing um, a four-hour talk on um, astrology and health in relation to holistic health. Oh, fabulous. Are you yeah. Busy so, bee? Well done. If around, <laughs> and if anybody wants to contact me directly, they can contact me on crscorpio1111 at gmail.com. Awesome. Okay, Christina. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a joy having having our dialogue and connection and looking at the bigger picture and what's coming as well and also bringing it back down to us as individuals. It's awesome. Love, love, love your work. Thank you so much. And um, we'll uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us and we'll see you next time on Enlightened Conversations. Yes, and Bye thank for you, now. Michelle, for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here. Such thank a beautiful you. soul. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs>